I'm angry with your mother because she didn't know how important you were in the world. I hold her responsible because a man is who his mother makes him to be. And she shows a crack vial over you and I'm furious with her because of it. Just think, in a man's life, and in a young boy's life, that he has to know somebody's standing for him. And I really am angry with your mother. Dan. Speaking for her. I would say forgive me. Forgive me for not knowing how valuable you are. Forgive me for not knowing how to give you what you needed. I didn't have it. And I didn't have enough sense to stop having babies. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me for not being there for you. Yesterday, I had each of these men build a replica of their childhood foundations. And now, I have asked these men to carry these foundations outside so they can begin to understand the weight and the burden of what they have lived with and lived through. We're going to put the foundation over here. To heal means to make whole. Nothing hidden, everything out in the open. Each of these men must acknowledge and accept the poor choices they made while standing on a broken or ill-constructed foundation. Do you see how much work it takes to keep that foundation in place? To keep all this stuff in order? Do you really get how much, how hard you've been working? So you stepped out of prison out of the penitentiary onto this foundation. Stand on your foundation, please. So I got one more card for each of you. Come to the edge. To fully own it. Yeah. Let me hear it. I did it. What did you do? I killed my friend. I did it. realized that it's a great deal of change, you know, by admitting that I did it. Not admitting. Admitting means you're guilty. Hmm. I did it. I accept responsibility. I own it. I did it. I accept responsibility. Standing on that foundation, he did it. Get that? Yes, ma'am. Take this down. It is so important for the men to hold themselves and each other accountable. They must take ownership of their past and their pain if they truly want to heal. I did it. What took you to the penitentiary? Be a part of a murder. Okay. So is that your hit? That's one of them. Yeah. What else? Fight for your life, brother. Fight for your life, brother. Tell the truth. Omar, there's a distinction. Look at me. There's a distinction between beating yourself up and taking ownership and responsibility. When we look at the foundation that he was standing on, he did what he was taught. He did what he learned. He did what he needed to do. You now, as a grown man, can accept responsibility for it without beating yourself up.
You beat yourself up. I could be wrong, Omar. I'm willing to be wrong. But there's a truth in there you haven't told yet. Right there. Come with me. Let me ask you a question. Remember I told you I will never impugn your dignity. I don't need to be right. I need you to be healed. And my spirit tells me that as a child, you were sexually violated. Is that accurate? Yeah. Talk to me. A friend of the family. Look at me. Um. Look at me. I want you to know that you can stand in your truth mm-hmm. as who you are. And I'm not gonna abandon you. Yeah, it, it wasn't as bad. It was bad, but it wasn't as bad. No, no, no. Sexual violation of a child is bad. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. First, I want you to own it. I was sexually violated. Yeah, I was sexually violated. And how old were you? Uh, and then four and five years stage. Four and five. Yeah. Talk to me. Um, I was a friend of the family. And he just thought, uh, he just thought playing with himself in front of me, and me touch him, he touched me, and he tried to. Do that. Every time you see him, you try to do that. It's a point. Queens, I want to say happy Mother's Day. I want to say happy birthday to Queen Renee. And if there's any queen or king that has a birthday today, happy birthday. But Queens, happy Mother's Day. And even if you're not a mom, you might have kids that look up to you. Even... You might not be a mom, but you might have kids that look up to you. Happy Mother's Day to you too, Queens. Happy birthday to Queen Renee. Happy birthday to any king that has a birthday today. Happy birthday. Um, and I would like to make one comment. Um, stereotype. I see that you made a comment. I'm gay. You said Latanya Jones said I'm gay. Um, I don't know if Latanya Jones said I was gay. And I think you just want this to keep going on and on. But you're so blind, stereotype, that you don't understand what we were trying to do. But I was trying to talk to Latanya Jones. I've reached out many times, but you don't know that because you're only, you be probably on her channel. So you don't know that, that we, I've, we've tried to reach out. Queens have tried to reach out for her to talk to me. It's okay. I'm just a regular king. It's all right. But stereotype, that's your opinion for your comment. That's okay. This is not scripted. What I'm going to be uploading is going to be discussions I would like to have in our chat. Queens and Kings, I don't get enough therapy on Mondays. You all, Queens and Kings, are so awesome. Me talking to you, you talking to me, That's been awesome therapy. You know what else has been therapy too to me? This lady right here. This queen right here. I've been watching her videos for over a year. She is awesome. And I'm glad to show, present them to you, queens and kings. So stereotype. You said the time you jumped said I'm gay. I never heard that. And if she did, bless her soul. Queens and kings, no, I ain't gay. So, bless bless your heart. Much, uh, you know what? All I can say is, I'm not going to say much love, but I'll say much respect. You don't have to worry about it. The only time I would talk about Latanya Jones is when she says something about other than that, I'm moving, I'm moving on.
queens and kings. Queens, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to the, to the mothers that's not mothers but have kids looking up to them. Happy birthday to Queen Renee. Happy birthday to any king that has a birthday today. I was scared and I was trying to do everything I could for it. Eventually, they left me alone. But I still knew it was a violation. Did you put on your foundation molestation? Uh, nah. Why not? It's no big deal. It is a big deal. It's owning it and standing in it out loud. Mm. Not picking and choosing. It's part of who he was. He took that to prison. He lived with that in prison. How did he live in prison? Knowing that he had already been victimized. How did he how did he manage that? Survive, I guess. You're at the brink, at the precipice of stepping into your greatness, and this is what you do. And if you do it out here, you do it in there. And until you really reconcile it. I mean really stand in it. And all of that. It's gonna stop you. Why do you fight it? Because I've always did it that way. Yeah, but it's not working, Omar. And it's not you. It's him. Can you have some compassion for him? He's so busy holding you together that he's falling apart inside of you. And you know who's getting the brunt of it? Your son. Your son has no idea that you failed him. None. He just wants your heart. But what you don't get is that what you're passing on to your son is that stuff right there. Get on your foundation and own it. I was sexually molested. Get on your foundation and own it. I was sexually molested. Omar's denial of his childhood molestation has been an obstacle that contributes to the imprisonment of his mind and heart. What are you choosing? Omar's willingness to face his brothers and stand in the truth of what he has done and what was done to him is a major step towards his internal and external freedom. So, my ownership and everything, everything I stand on, from being lost, confused, uh, sexual violated as a kid, depressed, mad, Failed. And I killed somebody. And I killed somebody. You're speaking for him. You're speaking for him. Before they were felons, they were victims. My prayer is that witnessing Omar's breakthrough will help the other brothers stand courageously in their truth as well. Own it. I did it. I um, uh, I was violent, careless. Is there more? Um, uh, I um, uh, so somebody's child. Sometimes I still can't remember their face. I remember how they look. some kind of excuse for what I did. But the truth I, is I could have did something different. No. He could 
not have done anything different. You would do something different. He could not. Look at his foundation. I need you to get that. We can end the story right here. Because as long as you're guilty, your soul will call forth punishment. Take that from this one. Not you, but him. Come here. Prison is more than a physical lockup. It is a mental and emotional one as well. Living with the truth of what he did and the trauma of having his freedom stripped away during his incarceration, Mr. Lamar locked down his heart. But in this moment, he is finally giving himself a stereotype. There's a reason I made the comment, you, you are so blind. I dislike when people talk about people are so horrible because they go to jail. There's some people, it's about awareness, it's always been. A lot of us has been through some of these situations. I've been to prison. I'm, I have a hard time explaining myself but queens and kings know. There's some people go to prison because of trauma. And every day I'm going to upload videos about this awesome lady, stereotype. How is this scripted? How is a man or a woman getting molested scripted? A mom or a father not being there. How is that scripted? Stereotype. You have an evil mind. You are so blind. And I hope one day you will stop thinking so evil. This, this queen, she's been through a lot. Do your research, right? Do your research before you speak upon this queen right here that is trying to help our people through their pain. Do your research. Permission to feel again. Now, his healing process begins. You got it. Expose it to the light of day. Understand what's underneath it so that you can make new choices moment by moment by moment. You good? Yes, ma'am. Go to your brother.
standing on this foundation. Hear me, Roderick. Standing on this foundation. Standing on those foundations. Roderick, carrying all of that in some form or another. Do you get that? Yes, sir. As long as you can stand in that with your head up. Not proud, but in ownership and responsibility. I did it. Standing on this. And remember, you're talking for him. Mr. Roderick and all of the men have been living in the shadow of the children they were when they committed the crime. Children who stood on foundations of hurt, pain, abandonment, abuse. If they are to heal and become whole, these men who stand before me today need to let go of those children. Done. Goodbye, sir. Now that they have learned to stand in their truth, it's time for a rebirth into a new identity. Done. Done with this. As these men begin to recreate their identities, they can be freed in their bodies and spirits because they will no longer be incarcerated in their minds. Done. By cutting away these t-shirts, these men are saying goodbye to the children that went to prison. I am complete with you, and so is he. So they can grow into the men they are meant to be. Now we begin to figure out who you are. Because that's not who you are. That's what you stood in. That's what you stood on. That's what you stood with. That's not who you are. Now we begin. You're free. Can you hear me? Yes, Miss Mel. Four young men standing on a broken, dysfunctional foundation went into prison and came out. Now they have no foundation. So what's the next step? Look at your son with me. Look at your son. The men and I have arrived at our final day together. And as they prepare to return to their loved ones, it is absolutely necessary that they clean up their relationships so that they will have the support of those closest to them. Hello! So I have invited Mr. Lamar's wife, Kimberly, to take part in supporting her husband as he begins the process of rebuilding his foundation. So, is there anything you want to share with your beloved before you get yourself ready to go home? I love you. I know I haven't been the calmest or the easiest person. Sometimes I kind of feel like I don't know how to have a marriage or a good relationship. Never had a an adult relationship. Left when I was 16. When I came home, I was 16. How do I conduct a, a healthy relationship with you when I feel like I'm inadequate? Never really truly believe in myself. Believe in you. I just didn't believe in myself. So I can accept that you would believe in me. Understand that. You want to kiss? Because you haven't had one in three days. You want one? Yeah. Give him a little kiss. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's too much. <laughs> By sharing his emotional experience with his wife, Lamar has cast off the old lies he lived and can now step into his truth. Each of these men face unique challenges and obstacles on their healing path. Omar and Willie have the distinction of being fathers to adult sons who grew up during their imprisonment. So I have invited Willie's son, Dontario, and Omar's son, Deshaun, back to the house to have open, honest, and clearing conversations with their fathers. 
as you step into your new foundation, wanted to make sure that things are clear between you and your offspring. Yeah, Omar has been in denial about the brokenness of his relationship with his son. We have a good relationship, but that, that, that's, that's, that's something missing out. How old is your son? He's 24 and a half. I left when he was 11 months. And, and you all have a good relationship? Is that what you tell yourself, or is that the truth? Yeah, I guess. Maybe. You weren't there. I was Omar now needs to open up to his son and share his truth. What do you want him to know now? You was born, man, and I picked you up. I just said, you know, God, I finally got somebody I could call my own. Because people don't know the loneliness that I felt growing up. That meant a lot to me. I don't think you even understand the extent of how I struggled every day, man, to make sure I, I bettered myself, educated myself, do whatever I could so when I got out, you know, I could be the best father I could. But the challenge was... I. I was still a kid when I got out, man. Like, you don't even realize how much you're still just as much a part of my life and my motivation. Like, you know what? I got to position myself better because I want to make sure my son don't have to struggle. I want you to have a successful life. Enjoy life, but also appreciate your family. I love you, man, with all my heart. We talked the other day when I asked you, did you have any disappointments related to your dad? I want to share with him what you said. At a younger age, it was more like why I couldn't have my dad because all my friends, I seen them having their dad and then my brother, you know, he had his dad. But me taking those visits up to see you and just understanding what you was going through, I couldn't be mad because you ain't have your daddy either. You ain't kind of have a man to guide you and show you how to be a man. So... It was hard for you too, so. Did you hear him say he used to be disappointed? Used to be disappointed, yeah. But this 24-year-old man is telling you I'm not disappointed. Yeah. Just look at him and let him know. I forgive you for not being there. Being forgave. So that guy on the platform who wants to use him to beat you up, tell him to shut the hell up. <laughs> this man, Don't man. let that be an obstacle anymore. Did you hear what your son just said? That's man. Yeah. Hug your daddy. <laughs> Omar has made tremendous progress by sharing so openly with his son. He is breaking the pattern that broke him, and his son's love will help him to continue to live in truth and power. Coming up. I think I deceived you. I really did. And what was the deception? Having you thinking that you're my son. Do I really feel like you're not my son? As we come to the end of our time together, it is important for these men to learn how to use their new tools to repair their broken relationships. So I've invited Mr. Willie's son, Dontario, to join us. I want to support you two in having a clean, clear, complete, open conversation. These two men have been at odds since Willie's release from prison. I've been having a lot of problems with my so-called son. What you mean, so-called? I was wondering, you know, was he really my son? I was like, man, you know, let's do a DNA, man, just to make sure so we can just... You got to clean that up, Mr. Willie. And now it's time to get down to the truth of the matter. I'm going to let the junior go first. What you want your daddy to know? What I want you to know is, no matter what you've been through in your life, I'm your son. I've always been known as your son. I love you dearly, but I want to show my life more and build a bond on the time that we've missed. I don't know how to talk to you. I don't know what really to say to you because we haven't spoken. I'm angry at the fact that you wasn't here for me when I needed you most. Tell him why your eyes are filling up with water right now. Tell him why. Because I just want you, regardless that you wasn't there in the past, I want you here now. And you're still not here. Tell him what that means and you're still not here. You're not the father I wanted 
regardless on that you wasn't here in the past. You're here now to be with me and I try to get you to bond with me or to spend time with me. You still don't find that time to be here. Take a breath. What did you hear him say? Look at him, Willie. To be honest, I'm getting real angry. I am. About? Because he's something lying to me. And I'm getting real angry and I'm about to leave. Okay. Because I know how I am. And I, I have never lied to him. And what you're doing is embarrassing and you're lying. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to him. No, wait, well, wait a minute. That's not what we do. He shared with you what his experience is. I'm not asking you for truth or consequences. Here's the question. What did you hear him say? That's his experience. And his experience may not be your experience. And you get an opportunity to talk. What did you hear him say? Look at your son, Willie. Look at your son. Do you know him? No. Talk to me. Talk to me. Before you answer, 
Just because, like, when you was in that wild lonely, bro, you know what I saw? Your excitement when he came. You came back to that dome. My son, my son, my son. Your son got you through many things. He don't know it. I ain't never told him. I ain't never tell me the day he got you through them bitches. I ain't never told him what it meant to you, man. I never heard he won your son. He got on this side of the wall. I love you, I don't love your son, but I fear your son more than you. Because I am your son. Looking at that man crying, man, that's me crying. I, I respect the fact that you want to know. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> don't throw him away, man. While Mr. Willie appears to be desperately trying to deny part of himself, Roderick is showing real growth by demonstrating the lessons he has learned in holding his brother accountable. And while he doesn't have anyone in his family who is able to come out and support him today, I have something special on my heart for him. Do you know why I have you in here? All your other brothers had somebody come for them. And you were the one that didn't have anybody show up for you. I wasn't going to let that happen to you again. And I told you yesterday that I was very angry at your mother. I'm angry with your mother because she didn't know how important you were in the world. I hold her responsible because a man is who his mother makes him to be. So today I've shown up to be the mother that's come to be here for you and to tell you I am so proud of you. Thank you. See, there's a distinction. You know, family we are related to by blood, but you get an opportunity to choose relatives. Wow. People you can be in relationship with. So I want to be in relationship with you. Yes, you need a mama. I'd love to adopt you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Roderick has so much potential, and I believe that with unconditional love and support, he can change the lives of many. He's already begun to change his own. This is great feeling, you know. I didn't know I need one. Yeah, you'll learn. I'm glad I came. I got three brothers outside and a new mom. This is a difficult, difficult thing for me. Crying in front of other men. TV. Yeah. And I feel good about it. Wonderful. So we got one last thing to do before we get out of here. All right? In a group of many, there's often one who captures my heart. As a mother, Roderick has shown up in my life as a child in need of love, and I am honored to provide it. He has grown and come so far, as have all the men. But before we all part ways, I want to celebrate their rebirth. And I've invited Lamar's wife, as well as Willie's wife, to be a witness in this transformation. I want you to step up onto your new foundation. It's time for these four men to stand in their greatness with pride and power on their new foundations. Yesterday, you stood in the face of your brothers and you said, I did it. We were talking about what he did. Today we want to celebrate you and what you've done. Yes, when I say you came here, you say, I did it. Yes, you came here. I did. You stood for yourself. I did. You showed up for yourself. I did. You told your truth. I did. You did it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You kind of I did it. Celebrate that I did it. Yeah, yeah. You shed a tear in public. I did it. <laughs> you spoke your truth out loud. I did it. You can celebrate that. You built a new platform. I did it. You told your truth. I did it. You stood for your brothers. I did it. Yes, you did it. I did it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Willie. I did. You told some truth. I did it. Yes. You own 
was your stuff. I did it. You showed up for yourself. Yes, I did it. I put some ideas in your head. Now I want to point your feet in the right direction. I am performing a foot washing ceremony with these men as a form of baptism into a new way of living, thinking, and being. The water is washing away their past. This is an act of honor to the new man that they have become. And the prayer is for them to walk forevermore in a direction of authenticity and love. You will never, ever go astray again. since we left here? No. Really? Even on time. Well, have you all spoken? Not really. You said that you wanted to know if this were your son because you had doubts. So we did the DNA test. Read that right there. So now what? you? He abandoned you? 
He rejected you and then he denied you. But you get to choose the kind of man you're going to become. You don't need a father now to become that man. You can stay broken and angry, abandoned and rejected and denied. Or you can say, damn it, I know. And I'm not going to be like Willie. I'm not going to abandon, deny, reject my children. Nor am I going to abandon, deny, reject myself. I'm not going to be like Willie. I'm not going to do to me what Willie did to me. He don't owe you nothing. Don't expect anything from him. Because he's already shown you who he is. You deserve better. You didn't say as a son. Can you hear me? Yes. Is there anything you need to say to this beautiful, young, black man sitting across from you? That you failed, abandoned, rejected, and denied. Anything you want to say to him? Well, I can't say that I'm sorry. At least I can't give you that much. Can't give you nothing else. You get to choose how to be in relationship. If you choose to or not. But be in relationship in a way that honors who you are. Who you are choosing to be as a man. Because now that he's got a piece of paper that he didn't know you in his soul and in his heart that he couldn't see your face in his face now you get to choose beloved what I told you you lead the world that you gonna lead the world is my way I had to ask you that I know Don't be like me. Be better than me.